Hello and welcome to Cultural Apologists React for today, September 4th, 2024. This is an AI-generated podcast and can make mistakes. Use it for generating possible ideas, but don't rely on it as an authoritative guide to the day's news or to the details of cultural apologetics. Benjamin Netanyahu's rival Benny Gantz accuses him of prioritizing his own survival over a ceasefire deal in the war with Hamas, which could free hostages held in Gaza. Tens of thousands of Israelis have protested against Netanyahu's handling of the war, which is approaching its 12th month. The U.S. is preparing to propose a take-it-or-leave-it deal, and if that fails, may pull out of the mediation process. So how might we think about this story from the standpoint of cultural apologetics? In The God Who Is There, Francis Schaeffer writes, the Christian should be a thinking, caring, and committed individual. This maxim serves as a guiding principle for analyzing the story about Benjamin Netanyahu's prioritization of his own survival over a ceasefire deal in the war with Hamas. A closer examination reveals that Netanyahu's actions embody a radical approach to governance, which compromises the well-being of his people and undermines the possibility of peace. Schaefer's concept of radicalism is particularly relevant here, as it refers to the tendency to prioritize ultimate goals over immediate concerns. In this case, Netanyahu's commitment to maintaining control over the Gaza-Egypt border at all costs exemplifies a radical approach that neglects the human cost of his actions. As Schaefer notes in A Christian Manifesto, radicalism is not just a matter of being willing to take a stand, it is also a matter of being willing to take a stand for something. Netanyahu's stance, however, appears to be driven more by self-preservation than a genuine concern for the welfare of his people. The story highlights the widespread dissatisfaction among Israelis with Netanyahu's handling of the war, which has sparked tens of thousands of protests. This popular discontent suggests that many Israelis are beginning to see through Netanyahu's radical posturing and recognize the need for a more balanced approach. Schaefer would likely argue that this shift in public opinion reflects a growing awareness of the importance of thinking, caring, and committed leadership. The U.S. proposal of a take-it-or-leave-it deal offers an opportunity for Netanyahu to reconsider his radical stance and opt for a more pragmatic path. However, if he continues to prioritize his own survival over a ceasefire deal, it may ultimately prove to be a self-defeating strategy. As Schaefer observes in The Church at the End of the 20th Century, the Christian should not be surprised when the world system turns against him, for the world is in revolt against God. In this context, Netanyahu's refusal to compromise may lead to his own downfall, as well as further destabilization in the region. Furthermore, the involvement of far-right settlers and their backers in the Netanyahu's coalition adds another layer of complexity to the story. Schaefer's analysis of the relationship between ideology and culture is particularly relevant here, as he notes in The Church at the End of the 20th Century that ideologies often serve as a second-level worldview, shaping our perceptions of reality and influencing our actions. The far-right settlers' ideology appears to be driving their aggressive behavior, which in turn fuels the cycle of violence. In conclusion, the story about Netanyahu's prioritization of his own survival over a ceasefire deal offers a striking example of radicalism in action. Through the lens of Schaefer's work, we see that this approach neglects the well-being of the people and undermines the possibility of peace. As Christians, we are called to be thinking, caring, and committed individuals who prioritize the common good over personal interests. In this context, Netanyahu's actions serve as a cautionary tale about the dangers of radicalism and the need for more balanced leadership. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Cultural Apologists React. Be sure to come back tomorrow for a new take on the day's news from the standpoint of Christian cultural apologetics.